Deep in the heart of the Brazilian jungle, a small band of railway enthusiasts is trying to keep a tragic memory alive. But money is tight. Some of these workers haven't been paid for several weeks by the tourist authority which runs this historic line. This is a story of attempts to tame the Amazon forest. A story of big international business trying and failing to make fortunes in the tropical heat at the beginning of the 20th century. It's also a unique story from the last Wild West frontier in the Americas. And the story of how promises have been made, but never kept. Almost 100 years ago, thousands of men from England, America, the Caribbean and Europe came and gave their lives to build this railroad. Today, all that remains is one small station and a few kilometers of working track. This town has become a living legacy to the dangers of the Amazon jungle. This river system stretches over 6,000 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean through the Amazon basin of Brazil to here, just near the Bolivian border. Ocean-going ships can and do come right as far as this town of Porto Velho. This is the reason for the railway. Millions of rubber trees deep in the heart of the Amazon jungle. The problem was how to get the rubber from the trees, through the river system and out to the ports and the international markets. The solution was to build a railway. For 50 years before, foolish rubber tappers tried to take their boats and their valuable cargo down the rapids and lost their lives in the process. Within a year of the line opening, the rubber boom in Brazil had collapsed. The tropical heat and the lack of money means this historic railroad built with British and American money is slowly fading away. These days, a road has replaced the railway. Some track still remains. In places, it's been taken over by the jungle. But here, 113 kilometers down the line, one landowner knows how important these iron rails are. Jose Marcelina da Silva farms 500 hectares with 100 head of cattle and a few palm trees. Para mim é muito importante porque a gente vê uma coisa antiga, né, que os mais velhos fez e a gente chegar aqui ainda ter a capacidade de ver tudo, né? Aí achei muito importante deixar assim, até para o meu filho quando crescer também eu mostrar para eles, ó, oh, isso aqui foi é, os mais velhos que fez. One man died for every sleeper laid along this 360 kilometer route, mostly from malaria, yellow fever, and other jungle diseases. At the turn of the century, Porto Velho was a brand new town on the banks of the Madeira, a major tributary of the Amazon. A fleet of trains and wagons was brought by boat across the Atlantic from Europe to this remote spot and prepared for service. The heat meant work took years to complete. Here on these shelves are the original documents, the archives of the Madeira Memore Railway. Original documents dating back to 1905 with a second attempt at the construction of this devil's own railway. É, esse é um grande problema que nós temos. É, é, como eu falei, eu estou sem documentação já há quase dez, um pouco mais de 10 anos. E só para você ter uma ideia, nós já mudamos seis vezes de prédio, né, o meu setor. Então, por um motivo ou por outro, nós fomos mudando de prédio. E já estamos nessa sala aqui há um ano. Nós passamos quatro anos né, com todo esse acervo encaixotado né, em uma sala na Biblioteca Estadual José Pontes Pinto. Now the problems are humidity, no air conditioning, pollution from traffic outside, the intense tropical light and termites who eat into the 90-year-old archives. 
In the 1930s, this railway had over 34 trains in operation running this line. It's the dedication of volunteers and people who work for the local tourist authority that keep this line in operation. The question is, how much longer? The weekly outing for this 100-year-old service is often interrupted. Another reminder that nature takes its toll on everything, that despite the problems, the service still runs. Sunday is the most popular day here on the Madeira Memore Railway. That's when the trains run for eight hours during the day, taking visitors the seven kilometres up the line and back again. The Tourist Authority says that every month some 2,000 tourists come and visit this particular line. And the government, I think, uh, has very few people taking care of the railroad, of the museum, and so on. Even the museum, as you see, they, they could take much more care. Uh, and you can see pieces of the railroad everywhere, so uh, just uh, thrown away. The railway never broke any records for speed. After the English and Americans, the Brazilian government took control. In the 1950s, it used to take two days to travel this line at speeds of up to five kilometers per hour. Tourism has so far passed this corner of South America by. The memory of the thousands of men from all over the world who died building this line is fading. Enthusiasts say promises to invest and develop this railway are still waiting to be fulfilled.